Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, Senior Currency Strategist with DailyFX. Today is Thursday, January 12, 2017. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America, and it's another quiet day here on the economic calendar, particularly out of the United States and Europe. Uh, Europe, we've got through the day with just five total reports, German public finances, German GDP for 2016, Eurozone industrial production month over month and year over year, and we're waiting on the ECB meeting minutes from uh, the most recent update they've given us. Today, it's not really about data. Instead, it's about central banks. We have five speakers due up from the Fed over the course of the day, not including Janet Yellen. And actually, when you look to the calendar today, uh, Janet Yellen is going to be rather absent, and I think that's important because it can be a little bit of a red herring. When you see the Fed official, a Fed chair, or you know the head of a central bank on the calendar, you expect their commentary to be market moving. Uh, but in this case, she's going to be talking about education, the history of the Fed, and um, what the Federal Reserve does to, with teachers at a town hall. I don't think it's going to be containing much forward guidance or an outlook on monetary policy as such. Paying attention to it could leave some people frustrated and honestly looking in the wrong direction, a waste of their energies and efforts. So I'd be paying attention to everyone else that's speaking today. We have uh, President Harker, uh, Presidents Evans and Lockhart speaking together. All three of those are non-voters. Um, Lockhart's actually speaking twice today. Bullard will also be speaking, who is a FOMC voter this year. So we're going to get a view, not necessarily of what the voters will be doing, but what the general consensus is among uh, some policymakers there. And Right now, where we stand, where markets are debating, A, the timing, and, and B, the pace of uh, the rate hikes. So, will we get two or three rate hikes this year? Will the rate hikes start in March or June? Those questions matter, and seeing how some of these more dovish members interpret recent developments will be important for the dollar. And certainly, when we think about how the dollar's been doing in context of policy, well, the one big thing driving forward the greenback has been this hope around the Trump trade, the Trump reflation trade, that a shift in U.S. fiscal policies would necessitate tighter monetary policy from the United States Federal Reserve. But instead, after that press conference yesterday, where I honestly had no idea what was going on, uh, you know, metaphysically, if you will, but if you take a step back and you actually read the script like a stenographer would and see if there are any specific policy points, it was rather light on policy. And so, you know, now that we're getting closer to Inauguration Day, uh, this hope that's been driving the dollar, having a chance to get refueled yesterday was seemingly left on the side of the road. And so, you know, here we are now, we were talking a few days ago about the dollar index teetering, how the U.S. yield situation was looking a little bit susceptible or suspect, at least due to the largest net short positioning in treasuries ever. And sure enough, over the last few days, we've started to see yields pull back. And that in and of itself is an alarming sign for the dollar. And that should be uh, the main focus that we continue to watch today as we get to these Fed speakers. When we look at the two-year yield, we're starting to break out of this triangle. When we look at the 10-year yield, we're starting to probe below that 2.333% level, which we've now set a new two-month low as of today in the 10-year yield. So for us, interest rate differential to the 2 and the 10 is shrinking. That yield spread falling down, it's not making the dollar more appealing. One thing that we've been looking for has been a return in gold then up to about 1,200, 1,210. And here we are at 1,204.87 this morning. Lower U.S. yields open up the door for at least traders to come in and purchase gold, particularly given the fact that right now everything going on in the market is moving on implied yield levels, right? We haven't seen an actual change in inflation, just a change in inflation expectations. We haven't seen anything else done it except for a run up in nominal treasury yields as well. Um, but beyond that, if gold's rallying, yields are falling back, dollar yen looks particularly susceptible uh, as we've been talking about the past several days. I would look here now as price falls below its 8.2134 moving averages. MACD stochastics are getting awfully close to those bearish territories. Not quite there just yet, but if anything, this would reemphasize that we are due for a near-term pullback, and we could see prices decline down into that uh, 111, 
McCall actually 110.67 uh, up to about 112 area where we've seen support and resistance having been carved out previously going all the way back to the first half of last year. But more importantly, we treated it as a pivot area at the end of November. Uh, DXY pulling back, no surprise that Euro dollar is 57.6% here is rallying up as well. And two of the levels that we were talking about uh, yesterday, actually, if we were to see a rally, 107.12 swing low that we had back in January 2016, and then you get up about 108.50, where we saw a price pivot a few times over the past year, including uh, it's back up to the top side in October, and then treated as a reversal level in December. In any case, the dollar needs some support, and you know when you think about the composition of speakers today, and you think about the composition of the board, the hurdle to getting three rate hikes this year seems rather high, considering that the composition of the board is now skewed a little bit more dovish than it was last year. So with these voters today, the most important thing for the dollar is going to be confidence that rate hikes will be coming this year, more than one, certainly. Uh, but we need to be seeing signs that the Fed is thinking about raising rates faster than they anticipate. Uh, I'm curious to see what we hear from someone like Charlie Evans, who is a little bit more dovish. And if we hear that Evans is behind this concept that we could get at least two hikes, all of a sudden you're putting a floor underneath Fed rate expectations, where if the Fed doesn't hike rates at least twice, the dollar is going to be in a lot of trouble. Keeping focus today on various dollar pairs, oil is up as the dollar is coming down. Dollar CAD here right now is falling further. We never got that chance to hold support up at that 131 70 area, but now that we're getting on approach to 130.60, taking a long entry against the 130 levels looking increasingly attractive given the risk to reward where by we're not taking that much risk, we could get stopped out relatively quickly and you're looking for a 400 pip move to the top side. It's a nice, uh, I would say more like a lotto ticket than a short trade here given the momentum. But when you think about longer term, what's going on with the Canadian dollar, there's been a subtle shift in language from the Trump transition team talking about how they would handle jobs with respect to NAFTA. And previously during the campaign, it was about a tariff, uh, stopping a tariff on Mexico. But now they're talking about a border transaction tax. And if they're actually to switch to a border transaction tax, that would affect to all goods coming in and out of the country, not just from one specific country. So while it may be aimed at Mexico, it would affect Canada too. So I think the Canadian dollar is in actually a little bit more of a tenuous situation than the market's giving it credit to right now, only because Trump's ire is not really aimed up north at the present time. However, that could change. I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more about NAFTA and the like over the coming weeks, particularly TPP as we approach his inauguration uh, in just over a week. Uh, that's it for me today, though. I'll be back later on with another video in webinar. Uh, each Thursday, we host the Central Bank Weekly Webinar going over major policy changes and expectations for this is Fed, ECB, BOJ, etc. That's this morning at 7.30 Eastern, 12.30 GMT. We'd love to have you join me there. And if not, uh, feel free to reach out to me through the Daily FX news feed, stock tweets, and Twitter at CVECUFX or email me CVECU at dailyfx.com. If I don't speak to you before then, good luck trading the rest of this week.